and they still exist today. The Jews and the Christians have taken their priests and their rabbis as gods besides Allah. And there was one Sahaba who used to be a Christian. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we didn't used to worship them. He used to be a Christian. And he was thinking that we didn't used to prostrate before them. We didn't used to supplicate to them and pray to them and worship them. But the Prophet then clarified the meaning of this ayah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Didn't they make halal for you what Allah made haram and you accepted it? And didn't they make haram for you what Allah made halal and you accepted it? Again, didn't they make lawful for you the things that Allah made unlawful? And didn't they make unlawful for you the things that Allah made lawful? He said, yes. We used to do that. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that was your worship of them. That was your worship of them. Therefore, surely, without doubt, whoever accepts any human being to be a legislator along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accepts that they have the right to legislate along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they have taken them as a partner with Allah. Whoever believes that any Imam, any Mufti, any Mulana, any Sheikh, or any human being has the right to make haram what Allah made halal, or to make halal what Allah made haram, they have done exactly what the Jews and Christians did. You have taken them as a God and you made them equal with Allah and you worship them as an idol along with Allah. And I say to you, my brothers and sisters, what Abu Hanifa said to his followers and what Imam Shafi said to his followers and what Imam Malik said to his students and what Ahmed Ibn Hanbal said to his students all of these great Imams, they said, do not blindly follow me. Take from where I took the book and the Sunnah. If you find that Allah and His Messenger, if you find a hadith or an ayah that contradicts what I say, leave what I say and follow the teachings of Allah. Do not put anyone up on a pedestal where you think that their words are beyond question or their statements are beyond thinking and understanding. Does this correspond with what Allah said and His Messenger said? I am a human being. Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, they were human beings. We all make mistakes. We forget. We make errors. We, our tongues slip. So everything, we always refer it back to Allah and His Messenger. Always. I don't mean, by the way, that just you can pick up the Quran and pick up the Hadith and now start making fatwa. No. We still always need the scholars. And we must always look to what the scholars have said. We are not scholars. I am not a scholar. Not a scholar like Abu Hanifa or Shafi or Malik. No. I am not a mufti able to make its jihad. But we can look to what the ulama have said. And we can compare it with Allah and His Messenger said and what other ulama have said. Brothers and sisters, think about this. Think about this. Is the Bible that we have today, the Torah that Allah gave to Musa and the Injil that Allah gave to Isa and the Zabur that Allah gave to Dawood, is this Bible the same as those? Yes or no? No. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So is it not true that, the, that those books have been altered and corrupted and changed and some things have been taken out and some other things have been put in? Is this not the truth concerning this book? 
Yes. Now, believe me, if anyone had an excuse to blindly follow their imams and blindly follow their rabbis and blindly follow their priests, it would be the Jew and the Christian. They say, look, our book has been changed and corrupted. We are, how can we understand even a book that has been corrupted? So we will follow our rabbis and our priests because our book is not even reliable. Now, if anyone had an excuse, they would have an excuse. But did Allah make give them an excuse? No. Allah said they took their priests and their rabbis as gods besides Allah. As the Prophet explained, they made halal what Allah made haram. We have a book that Allah has preserved from all corruption. We have the sunnah, the authenticated hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What excuse therefore do we have when our book is preserved? Subhanallah. Then how about the case of democracy? How about the case of democracy? Of course, the controversial issue is this. What is democracy? What actually is democracy? That's a good question. You see, no one is actually really ready to define democracy. All they will tell us is democracy is good, democracy is right. What is democracy? Well, there's lots of different versions of democracy. They don't really want to define it because they know that every definition they give does not actually realistically describe the system of government that they call democracy that they are practicing. Abraham Lincoln described democracy as the government of the people, for the people, by the people. This is one famous definition of democracy. In fact, the actual word democracy itself means in the original Greek, rule of the people. That's what it means. If we take the concept of democracy in its absolutely pure sense, its literal meaning, the rule of the people for the people by the people, and that's all we're doing right now. We don't pretend to get any more sophisticated. Let's just take that meaning and examine that meaning because at least that's one we can start with. Then is this something compatible with Islam? All the media is playing games. 50-year-old Muslim Arab married a 16-year-old girl. But when a 50-year-old non-Muslim rapes a 6-year-old girl, it comes in news briefs. Today, the fastest growing religion in the world is Islam. The fastest growing religion in America is Islam. The fastest growing religion in Europe is Islam. Watch Dr. Zakir Naik. Before the Americans came to Iraq, there was no suicide bombing. After the Americans came, then suicide bombing. People worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs. They fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was born. Islam is destined to supersede all. This religion of peace, this religion of haq, will supersede all the other ways of life. And enough is Allah's witness. Media and Islam, war or peace? Why things closer to I are so invisible to us? We have been gifted with a treasure the glorious Quran. But we live in our darkness of ignorance and suffer, struggle, strive. Understanding what Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has said, how his companions lived, will lead us to the path of peace and light. Wherever we are, anywhere in the world, our problems are the same and so is the solution. We have different forms, but the spirit is one. Let us invoke the spirit within, the spirit of Islam. Living the faith. Watch Adhar Khan and others in the spirit of Islam tonight at 6 p.m. UK and 7 p.m. Europe on Peace TV.
we don't have records that 